Well, joining us now for a response to the president's remarks is Republican Congressman Mike Pence of Indiana. He's the chairman of the House Republican Conference, and he's been very outspoken on the issue of health care reform. Congressman Pence, thanks so much for being here. First, let me get Thank your you, overall Megan. reaction to the president's comments. Well, I think it's got to be disappointing to millions of Americans. It seems like the president was at the health care summit last week, but he had the sound down. Um, and it seems like uh, this president's... Uh, been ignoring uh, the overwhelming sentiment of, of a clear majority of the American people who have rejected a government takeover of health care. Uh, anyone who tuned in today might have thought uh, that the president would have scaled back. We heard talk about a smaller bill. We heard talk about maybe the Democrats taking a more incremental approach. But, uh, you know, what we heard uh, was the president today essentially doubling down on a government takeover of health care uh, and, uh, and in effect saying uh, that it would that this massive expansion of government a trillion dollar expansion of government would quote give Americans more control well I think the American people reject this approach because they know that what they're advancing is simply going to give the government more control over decisions that ought to be made between patients and doctors and and families and so you know I, I really do believe this this hasn't changed anything it's more the same uh, government takeover with a few Republican ideas salted in. And, of course, the most troubling aspect here is the president of the United States openly advocating uh, that uh, the leadership of his party, uh, you know, abuse the historic role of the Senate, the historic rules of the Senate uh, to overturn uh, the will of the majority of the American people. That, that's got to be frustrating to millions, and it's certainly frustrating to us who will be in this fight on Capitol you're Hill. You're talking, of course, of reconciliation, a word the president did right. not use, but it was clearly referencing when he talked about how he wants an up right. or down vote when it comes to uh, this health care bill in the Senate. But, you know, the president, his defense seems to be, Congressman Pence, that, as he put it, he got uh, a supermajority vote. He got that vote first time right. around in the Senate. That's how he put it. He said it's, it's already passed the Senate with a supermajority of 60 votes and now it deserves right. the same kind of up or down vote that was cast on welfare reform, on children's health insurance, on the Bush tax cuts. He's making a reference to when the Democrats were in the minority uh, and the Republicans used reconciliation to push through certain bills. Yeah, it's completely, um, uh, it, it's just not supportable from a historical standpoint. I mean, even Robert Byrd has, re has, has said openly uh, that to use the reconciliation budget process in the Senate in this way would really be an abuse of the traditional role of the Senate. But, you know, it, I do think the big question coming out of this speech, Megan, is what's the hurry? I mean, the, the president says we've got to bring it to a close. It's time to make a decision. You know, the, the, the issue of health care and, and health insurance and the long-term cost of health care is a profound issue that has enormous consequences not only to the federal budget but to the most precious decisions of every American and every American family. He says the and time the for talk is over. He, well, he, he spoke to that in the yeah, remarks saying, saying that you guys on Capitol Hill have been debating this he said for decades and that you know the time oh, for on. talk is over. Yeah yeah well, and he says this isn't about politics but uh, why do we have to get it done in two weeks. I mean, uh, if it's not about politics, if they're not trying to force something through with enough time, uh, as one member of the Senate said yesterday, to hope they can recover politically by Election Day, then what's the hurry? This is way too important to rush. A majority of the American people want us to scrap the bill and start over. But what you heard the President of the United States say today is that because he can do it, he will do it. He's going to drive a government takeover of health care through the Congress. And I, I just have to tell you, I think the American people uh, and uh, Republicans in the Congress uh, have got another thing coming for them. I, beep, I think beep. we're going to turn this thing back, and I think the American people are going to be heard from, but it's not going to be people clamoring for more government, more taxes, more mandates. Uh, it's going to be Americans who are clamoring for freedom well, and for free market solutions. Before in I let you reform. go, Congressman, I have to ask you, uh, do you think that the president has managed to shift the vote situation in the House. All eyes are on the House right now to see whether Nancy Pelosi can get the number of Democrats uh, she needs to vote for this thing so she can get it to pass a second time around. She says she's got him, and she's a very good vote counter. Uh, she's a very good vote counter, but you know, the person they always leave out of the discussion here in Washington, D.C., Megan, is the American people. Uh, the, the president said in his speech that 
politics intruded. Well, you know what? At, at the town halls in August all over this country, at the 9-12 march, and it, it wasn't politics intruded. The American people intruded. The American people want legislation on health care that will lower the cost of health insurance, give people a chance to purchase health insurance across state lines, do medical malpractice reform, deal with pre-existing conditions. They don't want a government takeover of health care. And what the president is saying today is he is, because he thinks he's able to do it politically, is he's going to override not the minority in Congress, but the express will of the majority of the American people to advance it. And I, and, I think he's got another thing coming. And Congressman, stand by here because I'm just getting, we, we were going to have you followed by Democrat Anthony Weiner, your colleague in the House. He just got called into a meeting. They're telling me in my ear. Uh, we, we always have both sides here on this program. And, and unfortunately, Congressman Weiner, who's a fr friend of the program, now just lets us know that he got called into a meeting and can't come uh, on this afternoon. But so, so I have time for one more question with you, uh, Mike okay. Pence, and that's sure. this. On the subject of reconciliation and political fallout, uh, if, the, if, the, if that is how this bill is passed, the president sung a different tune before he became president on the issue of reconciliation. We've right. put together just this sampling. Just watch just this sampling, and I want to ask you how this will play out. we got to break out of what I call the sort of 50 plus 1 pattern of presidential politics. Maybe you eke out a victory of 50 plus 1, but you can't go. You know, you get there for one. I mean, there are a lot of nice perks, to be <laughs> but you can't you can't deliver on health. You, 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 we're not going to pass universal health care with, with a 50 plus one strategy. And uh, sorry, we didn't get the graphic up, but that was the president on audio tape saying we're not right. going to do a 50 plus one strategy if we if we get in control. That's not how it's going to be. And and there's a montage, Congressman, that has him saying that at least three or four times repeatedly. This is not how I'm going to govern. This is not how the Democrats are going to govern if they get into if they get into the, the leadership position. How how right. how will that play if they, in fact they do push health care through? Look, uh, I think that was one of the most amazing things about the speech, Megan, was the president referred to the fact they got 60 votes as though Massachusetts never happened. Uh, they, they don't have 60 votes now. The American people in the one election that they had a chance to be heard on the Senate in a dramatic way, the American people sent Senator Scott Brown uh, to Washington, D.C. to be uh, Senator number 41. So, you know, it's as though the president's simply ignoring the will of the American people. But so I, my answer is he was right the first time. When you look at the history of major social legislation, whether it was the enactment of Social Security, whether it was the enactment of Medicare, those bills, although controversial, hotly debated, at the end of the day, they passed with broad bipartisan support. And they did so largely because the United States Senate is that cooling saucer under the Constitution of the United States that requires that legislation achieves some measure of consensus and, and therefore broad support among right. the American people. The very idea that the president is going to force through a trillion dollar government takeover of health care on a pure party line vote, I think is going to be deeply offensive and deeply disappointing to millions of Americans. That is the thing that uh, is giving some Democrats in the House serious pause, especially in advance of the midterm elections. Congressman Mike Pence, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Megan.